All in all, not a bad evening on the way for a majority of the region. We can see a couple of showers here and there, maybe even hear a rumble of thunder or two in the southwesternmost corner of Kelowind. But overnight low temperatures, pretty comfortable. Partly the mostly clear skies, full of low temperatures falling mainly into the mid-50s, even some low 50s in a couple of areas. Tomorrow, upper 70s to low 80s for highs. Out west, we'll keep an eye on things for another round of showers and a couple of thunderstorms as well. We'll talk about that and go through the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up. But until then, first at four, starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. We take you to Northwest Iowa as communities clean up after weekend storms brought flooding. Plus, we talk with Kelloland farmers who are glad to see the rain, what it means for their upcoming harvests. And later, Minneapolis police are seeing an increase in thieves stealing items out of people's garages. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First of Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds issued a disaster proclamation for areas in northwest Iowa hit hard by flooding this weekend. The proclamation activates the Iowa Individual Assistance Grant Program that provides up to $5,000 for low-income families. Grants are available for home or car repairs, replacing clothing and food, and temporary housing expenses. Some areas of Sioux Center saw more than seven inches of rain with some reports of knee-deep water. Sioux County Emergency Management says that Saturday's rain posed some challenges. When you prepare, you prepare for a mult multitude of hazards. You never know what you're going to face the next day. So um, the good thing is that nobody got hurt. We're hoping to get a proclamation for um, governor's assistance for individuals. So um, we'll be working on that so people can apply for for help if they don't have uh, adequate insurance and that sort of thing. Volunteers from the Salvation Army also dropped off 50 emergency cleanup kits at the Sioux Center Fire Station. This weekend, storms also brought some much-needed rain for farmers and gardeners. Cherry Rock Farms, the family-owned operation south of Brandon, saw more than two inches of rain. It's much needed as they plant sweet corn seven or eight times each season. We do a lot of successive planting, so we're planting new stuff um, all summer long, and we still have stuff that we're getting ready to put into the ground. Um, so to have that additional moisture for those young you know, seedlings is, uh, is fantastic. We'll tell you why the owner calls this weekend's moisture a perfect rain tonight on Kettle Land News at 6. Well, for now, the rain is behind us, at least in the Sioux Falls area. Yeah, it turned out to be a great-looking day today, didn't it? Yeah, I even went out to the fair, Adam. I can't blame you. It was a very nice day to get outside, especially if you were East River, where we have been largely quiet and pretty dry. To the west, however, it's been a bit of a different story. Uh, far from a washout by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, this is our wall radar that you have right now on your screen. And what you're seeing is a couple of scattered showers of the light variety, a couple of uh, heavier showers just east of Hot Springs, but then you notice Hermosa to Rapid City, and along I-90 up toward Lee, Deadwood, and Sturgis. We do have some scattered showers out that way, and we can actually see some of that rain falling right now on our Deadwood camera. And not a bit good after Afternoon overall in terms of keeping things dry, but it could be worse. It could be what we had seen this past weekend, East River, where we had multiple inches of rain coming down in a very short amount of time. I do think we get some pretty nice days out west, especially later on this week. So just keep that in mind. Meanwhile, uh, speaking of the dry weather, here's Falls Park. 82 north wind at 11 miles per hour. The falls are going to be pretty full for a little while as we uh, continue to let that rain drain out from the Big Sioux River. We did get about 3.2 inches of rain at the airport in Sioux Falls over the course of the weekend and areas uh, to the South and east and northwestern Iowa also obviously receiving a lot more than that. 82, speaking of northwestern Iowa and Spencer, 79 for Marshall, 76 Pier, 80 Aberdeen. But take a look out to the hills, 56 in Custer, 66 in Spearfish, 62 for Rapid City. A very cool afternoon out there, uh, not to mention the scattered showers that they're dodging as well. Dew points have been pretty tolerable, mainly in the 50s in many locations, so it's been a pretty comfortable comfortable even where we have had the sunshine in place uh, further to the east. Now we are going to be talking about a few pretty sunny days in the extended forecast, but also a few days where we have to keep an eye on the skies in terms of the dew point. That's not really going to be that big of an issue. We'll talk about all of that as we head through the hour. 
Thanks, Adam. We're learning details about a weekend stabbing at a house party in Sioux Falls that sent four teenagers to the hospital. Police were called to the home early Saturday morning on the city's northwest side. Investigators say an argument broke out and the suspect pulled out a knife. Four people were hurt, including a 17-year-old who was sent to the hospital in critical condition. Police arrested 18-year-old Anyon Adam of Laverne, Minnesota for aggravated assault. South Dakota will not seek the death penalty against a man charged with murder of a Dakota Dunes woman. Alfredo Castellanos Rosales is accused of killing Jordan Beardshear at her apartment on April 25th. After a multi-week search, he was arrested in Mexico, expelled from the country, and then picked up by officials in Texas. At his arraignment, the court ordered that the state to give notice of whether it was seeking the death penalty. Castellanos Rosales pleaded not guilty to the charges of murder, child neglect, and child abuse. Tu Tao, the last former Minneapolis police officer convicted in state court for his role in the killing of George Floyd, has been sentenced to nearly five years. Tao has testified that he served as a, quote, human traffic cone when he held back bystanders as Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's neck while the black man pleaded for his life. The judge found Tao guilty in May of aiding and abetting second-degree manslaughter. Now, during Monday's hearing, Tao spoke for several minutes about his growth as a Christian since Floyd's death, but denied his role in it. I did not commit these crimes. My conscience is clear. I will not be a Judas, nor join a mob in self-preservation, or betray my God, nor the true faithful countrymen who found this country under the fear and majesty of God. I was hoping for a little more remorse, regret, acknowledgement of some responsibility, uh, and less preaching. This sentence will run at the same time as a three-year sentence on a federal civil rights conviction. His attorney says they will appeal. Our recent heat is leading to higher than normal losses of cattle in feedlots in eastern Nebraska. Governor Jim Pellin sent a letter to the U.S. Ag Secretary requesting financial help for livestock producers. The Livestock Indemnity Program pays producers about 75% of the losses. The Nebraska Governor's Office could not provide the figures on how many cattle died during the recent heat wave. However, some ranchers say that their losses weren't as bad. A uh, University of Nebraska Livestock Extension ed educator said that he met with a group of feedlot operators there who said that they lost about 50 cattle in feedlots with capacities of five to 7,000.